have been waiting for Xiaomi to step up their game for years. They've been delivering well-built, competitively priced handsets that have failed to set them apart as an industry leader. The Mi Mix is a concept phone that is being sold in small quantities in China, so most people are never going to actually be able to get their hands on one. We picked up ours from Trading Shenzhen, so where there is a will, there is a way. If you do pick up the Mi Max, load it up with what I like to refer to as screen pornography and prepare for a whole lot of ooh, ah, oh. This 6.4 inch display is huge and the bezels have a massive wow factor. It does feel big, but having said that, it's not actually much bigger than the Nexus 6P or the iPhone 7 Plus, both of which have much smaller displays. With a resolution of 1080p, we're disappointed in the spec, but honestly, we're not disappointed in how the display looks. And to be honest, when we look at the battery life, we can't help but be a little glad since this is a battery life beast that we have on our hands. We've been seeing between five to six hours of screen on time, and the battery just seems to go on and on forever, which is amazing. With a screen to body ratio of 91%, games and videos look unreal. The only thing that's annoying is that it has a 17 by nine aspect ratio, while most content is formatted for 16 by nine. So we're often left with a black bar along the side, which for the most part is filled by the Android navigation bar. To really show off the display, I downloaded a ton of graphically intense games and they all scaled properly and looked absolutely stunning. Thanks to the Snapdragon 821 processor, the load times seem quite short, but you can get a 6GB version with 256 and there is no micro SD card for expansion. When it comes to performance, we're generally pleased with how it handles, and we imagine the 6GB version would handle opening apps and multitasking even better. But I'm not sure I'd be willing to fork out the extra money for the minor bump, since I think the performance is already really good. Another hardware feature that's great is the speaker. It's piezoelectric ceramic, which means that it converts electrical energy into mechanical which is then transferred to the phone's internal metal frame, which vibrates to create sound. It's loud enough for you to watch videos at home and not reach for your headphones. In noisier environments, it's a little bit quiet. And when making phone calls, since the sound is coming from inside the phone, I find it a little bit muffled. Another interesting hardware change is the proximity sensor, which has been cut from the top bezel. Normally, smartphones use an infrared proximity sensor to detect your face during a phone call. This way, when you press the phone against your ear, you don't accidentally press buttons. The Mi Mix still does this, but instead of an infrared sensor that needs to be mounted on the outside of the phone, Xiaomi uses an ultrasonic sensor that can live beneath the screen. Personally, I've never noticed a difference, which means that it works great and actually takes up less space inside the phone, and this allows for that crazy thin bezel. One thing that we should note about the hardware is that it is all ceramic. This is meant to be a very durable material, but an all glass phone has me terrified. The Mi Mix only comes out of the case when I need a couple of glamour shots, and beyond that, it lives inside this protection. This is definitely not a phone that you're going to be using naked, especially because it has two modes, polished and filthy. Moving on from the very cool hardware, let's talk about software. First off, it won't come loaded with Google services, and it's a little bit of work to get them running. And every once in a while, you kind of notice that it isn't seamlessly integrated. Like when I'm downloading apps through Google Play, I get this reminder that the app is really large even when it's not. I can get past the fact that MiUI has no app drawer. And many of the apps are preloaded in Chinese, so even though you have the option to change to English, at the end of the day, it's running Android 6.0, which means that this large handset doesn't take advantage of UI scaling that's available in Nougat. Personally, I'd be able to get used to it, but I am used to using a lot of different Chinese handsets. It has its own unique flavor, but it is missing a ton of features. And this futuristic form factor just really has you yearning for Android's full capabilities. Carrying on with software, the camera is also mid-range. It takes a decent enough photo, my food photos look great. Generally, the scenery is fine. Uh, the selfies smooth out my skin and make me look younger. And even though it took a little bit of time to figure out how to take a proper selfie because, well, the camera's at the bottom and it's very easy to cover the camera with your thumb. But once you figure out how to change your grip, it's absolutely no problem. The camera is on par with what Xiaomi's delivering in most of their handsets, which means that we have a mid-range camera. 
When we start to look at low light performance, I was surprised. I didn't think it would be this good. It is definitely not a flagship low light champion, but these are more than usable. In fact, these are better than a lot of mid-range smartphones out there today. Daytime photos lack detail and no OIS means that when we take a video, we're relying on phase detection autofocus, which in this case isn't very good. Every video I took pulses. But let's be honest, this is a phone you'll be lucky to own. Even in China, it's hard to get. If you can find it on Trading Shenzhen where we picked it up, buy it. Get a tempered glass screen protector and know that you're taking part of the future. Reducing the size of bezels is always a good thing. Everyone should want larger displays and more compact bodies. But the fact that the proximity sensor, front-facing camera, and earpiece all worked basically just as well means that Xiaomi did a great job innovating. Maximizing screen real estate introduces a lot of problems, but Xiaomi has solved all of them. The result is an all-around better phone design. Xiaomi's been known as a copycat, and the Mi Mix is original hardware that is stunning. The mid-range is where Xiaomi lives today, and the Mi Mix demonstrates that they have the hardware chops to lead the pack. Now all they need to do is upgrade their software and camera to compete with the high-end. So what do you guys think of this concept phone that actually made it onto the market? Let me know in the comments, and as always, I'm your host Nicole Scott for Mobile Geeks. Yeah.